This is Wagner Live. Is Wagner Live. If it's going on in business, he's talking about it. Real, real, raw, raw, and direct. Let's do it. This is Wagner Live. And this is Wagner Dos Santos. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Wagner Dos Santos, and this is Wagner Live Insights. Today, I want to talk about something that uh, literally um, inspired me just maybe an hour ago. Um, I was um, contemplating a few different topics for today's insights, and this one just seemed um, really appropriate, and I'll tell you why. So the title of this podcast and this live show is What Every Great CEO Must Know. And um, the reason why I thought about this, and I'm not necessarily giving myself a, a pat on the back to say that I'm a great CEO, but what, I'm, what I want to say is that um, I was ta- tasked to do something today that's out of my job description, um, I was tasked internally to support uh, a fellow staff member, and it reminded me of the knowledge that I feel that every CEO needs to ha- have, and every uh, leader of a company, um, business owner. So when I talk about CEO, it's not just big corporate CEO, but you know the the small to medium sized business owner. So this speaks to all of those individuals that are in those roles or are seeking to be in those roles, all right? So I put together, and as you guys know, I um, I often do a lot of research um, on the net, pull up some, uh, some really good articles that are out there, but this time around, this is all from me. This is all from up here in the brain. I'm, I put together my very own top 10 list of what every CEO must know from my experience, all right? So here we go with number one. Number one is basic, and, and by the way, um, it's in, in no specific order, okay? It's just random order, but, uh, but this is the top 10 list. All right, number one, basic finance and accounting. Um, this one, even though it's in no, base, no, no um, special order, I really do believe this, this belongs in the number one position on the list because you can't run any business successfully if you don't have a basic understanding of finance and accounting. You may be able to, but not successfully run this business. You need to ultimately understand how finance works, how debits and credits work, um, cost of goods sold, fixed costs. Um, you need to know uh, what a PL looks like versus a balance sheet. Um, you need to know these things because it's at the core of your business. It's why you're in business if you're in a for-profit business. And even if you're not and you're a CO, uh, 501c3 or C6, you still have to maintain some management of money coming in and going out. So yes, uh, you may say that, uh, well, I just hire a finance person or an accounting person to do this. Absolutely, you may be at a point where you can do that, but you still should know what that person is doing and be able to evaluate the work and not just blindly trust somebody else to manage the finance and accounting. So that's number one, and it truly is number one. Number two, operations and office management. Um, Understanding how an office is managed. Again, this is a position that's often supported by a COO or an operations person and or an office manager. But when you're starting out, you probably don't have those positions filled and you really need to understand how does an office operate? How does a business operate from uh, having the proper supplies that you need on a regular basis to do the work that you need to the office equipment that you need uh, telephones, do you have VoIP lines or uh, traditional telephone lines and PBX systems and ah, all that stuff, right? It sounds like a lot, but having an understanding of all of that is, uh, is really something that I think is vital for uh, CEOs and business owners to know. Um, I have uh, an IT background and, um, and, and never pursued that as a 
uh, as a job, as a career, because I wasn't interested in doing that. But it does come in very handy for me in business because I can troubleshoot and tackle a lot of IT issues on my own without having to call for IT support. However, that doesn't mean that sometimes it's just not better for me to call IT support so that I can focus on what my job really is. But knowing this is uh, is really key to, uh, you know, I, I look at it like being, you know, captain of a ship, right? The captain of a ship needs to know, you know, uh, every aspect of his or her ship, right? So um, this, is, uh, this is definitely where I'm going with all of this. So... Uh, So number two, operations and office management, very key. Um, Number three, also very important, business development and sales. So um, knowing how, you know, and I I run across people, uh, a lot of people sometimes that say, man, you know, I can do the job and I I really want to run my own business and uh, really have a... Uh, an interest in doing that and aptitude maybe for doing that, or at least I think I have an aptitude for doing that, but I hate sales. I hate selling. I, you know, I just, you know, I just want it to be word of mouth and people to come and blah, blah, blah. In business, you need to sell. I'm sorry, but, um, you need to know how to sell and that never changes for the business owner or the CEO because people always want to go right to the top. And if the CEO or business owner is someone that they like, then they're going to want to do business with the company. So you always have to be in sales mode. You um, you always have to have that ability to build business. Even if you bring in someone to support you in business development, you need to be able at the core to build that. And certainly before you have a team of anything or anyone you need to be doing all that on your own. So your business isn't going to grow just because you put up a website and you really knew how to optimize it for search and you're getting all these leads in there. You still have to have some understanding of sales to even close those leads, right? So it's not just acquiring the leads, but it's also closing them. So without belaboring the point, business development, sales, very important. Number four, Client services, otherwise known as customer services or account management, um, that's also another area that's very important. Some people also say that, well, I'm not client facing, you know, I'm kind of a behind the scenes kind of person. Well, you need to be in front of the scenes. You need to be personable. You need to use psychology and know how to use psychology and empathy with clients and um, the the core of a, of a strong business is one that knows how to maintain its clients and grow its own clients. In addition to building new business, you need to be able to keep the business you have and grow the business that you have because at the end of the day, it is always easier to grow the business you have than to go chasing new all the time, right? So when you want to get new business, it's because you want to expand, not because you're trying to replace. Although sometimes, you know, um, Clients, to, despite, your, to, despite your best efforts, want to go after the the next, you know, beautiful shiny object, and uh, you need to prepare for that as well. So, you need to make sure that you are um, prepared and uh, and and well trained to uh, to deal with clients, to to talk to clients, to really empathize about their needs, and um, and to be a solution provider. So that's that's definitely a very important aspect for any CEO. Uh, and business owner. Um, Number five, talent acquisition. So uh, being uh, in the know in terms of where the good talent is and where to get them. Again, this is also um, a task that is supported by recruiters and, and other companies. But you as a business owner and a CEO need to know how to do that on your own uh, first. Um, and I, and I can't stress it enough that when you're looking at any of these positions to support these efforts, they should be supporting them so that you can focus on the bigger picture, not because you don't know how to do any of these things, you know? So that's what I'm driving here is that you need to know these things to be a successful business owner and CEO. So knowing how to find the right talent and recruit them is also very key. Number six, human resources, psychology, uh, team management, building, uh, very, very important. So 
another area that you find there are a lot of deficiencies sometimes in, in all levels from small to large businesses is some people um, don't really fully understand how to manage people. So they know perhaps the business, they have skills uh, related to running a business or that particular business, but they just don't know how to manage people. That requires a whole skill set of its own, knowing how to manage different genders, um, different personalities. Um, th there's a variety of uh, challenges that come into play when you're dealing with many different people and knowing how, knowing that it's not a one size fits all when you manage people and knowing how to get the most out of them, how to uh, build them through positive reinforcement, not to break them down, but to keep them happy, keep them motivated, incentivized, uh, make sure that they are getting a uh, positive um, uh, reinforcement through through your uh, through your communications. There's a lot of things in there. You could you you could do a whole podcast and a show just on that topic alone. Um, but it's so important to know how to manage people. Um, number seven a good understanding of every position. So you kind of see where I'm going with, with all these steps that, um, that it's really leading to this, which is that picture, um, if you will, and hopefully this would never happen to anyone, but that you would have mutiny at the company. Everybody just quits. You should be able to keep the company running. You should know enough about all the jobs there that you can keep it running. You ever see, um, you ever see some, some movies and shows and situational settings where, um, management goes around and, and asks, uh, employees. So what do you do for the company? What, what, what's your job? What's your role? What do you do for us? You don't want to be that person. You should know what everybody does and should they leave, be able to step right in and do it. And, and I think that one is, um, is the one that really inspired me today to talk about this because today wasn't the first time that this has happened. It's happened in the past where I very naturally stepped into a position that isn't my, um, you know, it's not the, the job that I do on a daily basis as head of the agency, but um, it's something that a staff member would do, but I could just jump in and do it um, when, a, when I need to support a staff member that may be um, out sick or on vacation or something like that and there's no one else that can support that person. I've done that a few times and I, it just came naturally and I didn't realize that um, it's rare that there are some, uh, some business owners that wouldn't be able to do that. They would have to find somebody to do the work because they don't know how to do it. And I think that's kind of scary. I think it's scary if uh, if you have, uh, I would feel scared if I have a bunch of people on my team that do work that I don't know what they do or how they do it, and then I'm so reliant on that person, and even if I don't want to let them go because maybe they're poor employees in some other sense, I have to keep them because I don't know how to do the job myself. That's a scary situation to be in. So I think it's very important that when you build a company, you know how to do all the tasks within the company. And then not just from the protection side of things, but from the respect side, more importantly, because those employees are going to respect you so much more when they know that you understand the job that they do. So uh, few people like receiving direction from someone that has no clue as to the job that they do. So keep that in mind. Um, and then number eight, basic marketing communications and communications. So understanding how to market your business, how to do advertising, uh, public relations, just a basic sense of how those work. Those are also very important because you may have hopefully put together a business plan or have a business plan in place, but now that plan has to be activated through a marketing and communications plan. So no business plan um, is fully successful unless it's met with marketing initiatives that help meet those goals and objectives. So knowing how to do that, um, sure, you know, there are agencies like mine 
that uh, companies hire all the time to help them with their marketing and communications, but it should be because we're supporting your initiatives, not because you have no idea how marketing and communications works. I, I often say that my best clients are those that are the most educated clients. The ones that really understand what we do um, are, the, are the best clients to have. So it's really important to have at least a basic knowledge of marketing communications that you could do some of it on your own if you had to. Um, number nine, industry research. Also very important. Competitive analysis, understanding trends, um, keeping yourself tapped in. Don't, um, don't be just so focus on the work that you're doing that you don't set enough time. I mean, be focused on the work. Okay. I don't want to say don't be focused, but make sure that you budget some time in your work day or after hours, if you have to, for a little bit, um, to do research, to see what the c- competition is doing. And even more importantly, in today's, um, very fast paced, evolving landscape, see the future and see what's trending and see what you need to know to stay ahead of, uh, uh, of your industry and, and of trends. So taking the time to do research and really understanding your industry is also extremely key. It's not just about knowing your business and staying in a bubble. You need to go beyond and actually know uh, more about your business and, and the competition around you. And last but not least, number 10, and I say last but not least, but I could I could go on for much longer. There's probably... 40, 50, 100 points that I could go through. But to keep this nice and concise, uh, I kept it to 10. And then number 10 is business strategy. So know how to develop a business strategy, uh, a vision for your business, and uh, uh, extremely important, that's probably gonna be in your business plan. And it's also something that evolves over time. Um, uh, There's a great book uh, out there that many of you may know called Good to Great. And um, it talks about which I subscribe to as well, that um, you want to hire the best people that you may not necessarily have an idea of where they fit. Um, and um, you want to be open enough with your vision that if you do bring them in, that um, they may help evolve the vision beyond what you even thought of. And so I think that's great as well. I think that business owners and CEOs definitely need to have a good feel and a good understanding for the strategy they have in place, but be flexible and nimble enough to let that grow with the team that they bring in place. And uh, I talked about this in a uh, previous episode about Richard Branson and how I'm a big fan of his entrepreneur uh, philosophy where he hires um, lots of entrepreneurs to be his employees at Virgin so that they can have some autonomy in developing new things and uh, um, uh, new innovations under the the Virgin umbrella. And he uh, cultivates that and encourages that. And it takes Virgin to uh, to areas that he never even thought of in the beginning. But he makes sure that he hires the right people that are going to help evolve uh, the company into, into areas that... Um, uh, that are uh, competitive and uh, and certainly very innovative. So um, I'll go back to listing these for you. So number one, basic finance and accounting, all right? Important, so what, what CEOs and business owners must know. Number two, operations office management. Number three, business development sales. Number four, client services, customer services, account management, whatever you call it. Uh, number five, Uh, talent acquisition, Uh, number six, human resources, psychology, uh, having having some good psychology, understanding team management, building. Uh, Number seven, a good understanding of every position within your company. Number eight, basic marketing and communications. Number nine, industry research, competitive analysis, uh, trends, insight. And then number 10, business strategy. So uh, hopefully you, uh, um, you apply some of these and these were helpful for you. Um, these, um, these top 10 points, if you can uh, accomplish these, and like I said, there are so many more that could be tackled, but if you're able to at least accomplish these 10, um, I assure you, you're gonna be a very successful CEO and business owner. And uh, not only will your business be successful, but you will have a staff that respects you as well. So that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining me. 
And I will be back tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific for episode 26 of Wagner Live Insights, only on Periscope. Until next time, this is Wagner. You've You've been been listening listening to to Wagner Wagner Live. Wagner is an advertising agency executive, and it's his passion to talk about business without the fluff and blowing smoke. Having owned and operated several different businesses since the age of 17, and with 20 years of experience in advertising and marketing, he may be just a tad bit qualified. We hope you enjoyed the show. Catch him on social media at Wagner Live and hit the website at Wagner.live. We'll see you again next week.